I'm Congressman James Langford, representing the 5th District of Oklahoma. Honored to be able to serve us. I'm sitting in my office in Washington, D.C., and we get a lot of emails and a lot of letters that come in the office every week. We respond back to those. And in fact, we have a lot of conversation on, on the text and working that out. We spend a tremendous amount of time responding to mail. Today, I'm just going to respond to a few pieces of mail that are coming up that we get, get that are common statements that are coming in. So I'm just going to read a couple of them to you and get a chance to answer back and just catch everyone up on these kind of issues. Uh, one of them it comes from Charles. Uh, he asked the question, will you support an extension of the temporary payroll tax reduction uh, or allow the expiration of the temporary cuts for some of the highest income earners? Uh, I get this question quite a bit right now. Uh, will you allow for these temporary tax increases? Uh, and the way that it's proposed currently is that we'll have a permanent tax increase on some people to cover a temporary tax increase for other people. Uh, here's the problem with that. Uh, most businesses don't plan on a 12-month cycle. They plan on a several-year cycle. Uh, so to be able to say, I'm going to hire new people because my taxes will be low for a few months, but they're going to go up significantly. In fact, under the current proposal that's out there, taxes would go up 50% in January of 2013. Uh, so it would go down for a year, then would jump up 50% in January. That's very difficult for businesses to plan. I'd rather see us deal with tax code that is long-term, as much as we possibly can. If we do short-term incentives, uh, it's easier to do that on the corporate side than it is on the individual side. Uh, and it's much easier to do it uh, for a corporate side rather than it is for small businesses, because small businesses are one that are affected the most by the long-term uh, changes. So like to see us do a long-term change in our tax plan rather than some short-term fix on it. Quite frankly, I don't think a short-term couple of months uh, type fix is going to be able to solve what's happening in the economy. We've got to have bigger answers than that. Uh, so yes, we're looking at everything on the table, but I want to be able to tell you that I'd much rather see a long-term tax plan. Uh, here's another letter that came in from Warren. So you said you indicated that uh, Congress has passed a bill requiring a vote on a balanced budget amendment to our Constitution. If it passed, it would have to be, it would have to be uh, ratified by the states. He said, I assume you're in favor of this amendment, thus I assume you're in favor of a balanced budget. So why is a balanced budget several years down the road a good thing, but not this year? And then he goes on to explain some of those things. Let me just say this. I am very in favor of a balanced budget amendment. In fact, I've been actively working since the very first week that I've been here in Congress talking to be able to a balanced budget amendment. We've not had a vote on a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution since 1995. At that time, there were 300 votes in the House of Representatives, very bipartisan, and it failed by one vote in the Senate. If we'd have passed a balanced budget amendment in 1990s when our deficit or our total debt was around $3 trillion, rather than where it is now at $14 trillion, it had been very different for us now in our economy, thinking that we've been in balance all those years since then. We're not anymore. That's our problem. Now it has become so bad and we're so far out of balance. Uh, that is impossible to be able to balance in a single year without dramatically ruining the economy for that year. In fact, the most dramatic proposal that's out there between the House or the Senate is a proposal to balance the budget in five years. Uh, that's Rand Paul's budget in the Senate. Even that would require five consecutive years of uh, debt ceiling increases to be able to accomplish that one. And it's the the farthest out there as far as trying to get it, and it's a five-year. So the statement here, why can't we do it in one year, I can tell you, no one's proposing a, a one-year proposal on it because right now, all of our agencies, all of our military, all of it, all salary, all benefits, everything is paid for with borrowed dollars. We've got to start working down in every single area so we can get back into paying our bills and that we can actually uh, not just afford to do it, but we can only do things that we can afford. Uh, so I'm very focused on the balanced budget amendment. We're going to have a vote on it this fall. It'll take about seven years for the ratification. That'll give us time to be able to get everything in process and get everything going and to provide the push that I think Congress needs. Uh, the one thing I've noticed since I've been here in Congress is they never do anything until they have to do something. And so for me, the balanced budget amendment is like the parents in the legislative room standing over Congress every year saying, you have to get this in balance. You cannot add more debt. Once we get that in place, then Congress has to do that. Until they do that, we're going to be fighting uphill between the House and the Senate trying to get that done. Uh, next letter that came in was from Tracy. said, I own a small manufacturing business and names the business and the details there, which I'll leave out. So they've owned this business for 13 years. So I've been very proud to offer medical and dental insurance to our employees at no cost to the employee. Good for you. So we've used the name the insurance company. But with the Obamacare passage, they dropped their medical portion. This has actually happened to quite a few different employers that the previous company they used for medical insurance 
has dropped and said, if we're going to have all these requirements that are coming down from the president's health care plan, we're just not going to offer medical insurance. So it's a lot of companies are combining in. So I've, I've heard that from quite a few people. So this October, uh, we'll be forced to transition over to this new company, which they name. Our premiums have now doubled and the company can no longer afford to pay 100% of the premiums. The, em the employees are now going to have to pay a percentage. This is the unintended consequence that's happening in a lot of a lot of companies. There are a lot of people that were excited about the president's health care plan. I was not one of those. I think it's unconstitutional to require any American to have to be able to pay for one product just for the privilege of being an American. So I don't think it's going to stand constitutional muster. The states are struggling with all the exchanges and being forced to put together the structure for it. Individual employers are struggling with it because people that carry part-time and entry-level full-time employees uh, can't afford a large-scale uh, insurance plan as well. So it's going to have a big impact on, on entry-level jobs, and it's going to have an impact on manufacturing areas. Uh, where you look at, you used to have a plan that covered catastrophic or covered all the basics on it, but now you have to bump up to a different plan. So while some people would say that's a good idea, force them all to do that, we're reaping the, the problems with that in our economy right now. Hiring is slow because people don't know what medical costs are going to be. The economy is slowing down because people aren't doing new capital investments because they know they're going to have to add more to medical benefits to employees. And so we're watching the result. While all the economy is not due to the president's new health care plan, there is a significant portion that is. We're at work right now trying to repeal it and trying to put in some real reforms. There are issues in the medical uh, field and how we're handling our payments and our reimbursements uh, for medical care. Uh, but the solution that was proposed and passed by Congress next year, I don't think it's a solution that's going to help our economy. And I think it's exacerbating a lot of the issues that are happening. We passed that in the House. Obviously, the Senate has not even taken it up and refuses to deal with the issues in the Senate. We'll see once the elections happen next year. We'll continue to push on it as many areas as we possibly can this year. And things like the 1099, uh, that was a part of the president's health care plan. We have repealed that provision already. That affects a lot of small businesses and that requirement, that's been repealed already. We'll continue to push on other areas to provide some kind of stability uh, to employers and employees in the days to come. Thanks for continuing to write letters into us and drop emails. It's by far easier to be able to send us emails. If you want to do that and you live in the 5th District of Oklahoma, you go to langford.house.gov and uh, you can actually send us an email through that and look forward to bumping into you around the 5th District of Oklahoma.